I'm very curiosity driven. It's really an adventure of actually discovering hidden secrets of uh, biology with thousands of different cell types, billions of neurons, and they all need to interconnect and try to understand on a molecular level how you can control that. Dietmar Schmucke is a molecular neuroscientist who has worked for the last 20 years in the U.S. and Leuven, Belgium. Here, in one of the oldest university cities of Europe, he has been working at the interface of molecular and developmental biology, bioinformatics, and medicine. For the human brain, only a few thousand different genes decide on the wiring of trillions of synapses that interconnect its nerve cells. What mechanisms direct the wiring of such an inconceivably complex network? I'm mostly interested in understanding how you can create that much information that is necessary to build a very complex network of nerve cells. So where is this information coming from? Different routes can lead to the answers. Using computer-based modeling, for example, or a series of experiments done on Drosophila flies with modified gene segments. In order to identify and track individual nerve fibers, Schmucka's team uses fluorescent proteins or transfers bright chemical dyes onto the single neurons. And what happens now is essentially that the dye is traveling in the membrane of the neuron that's sitting in the socket. You can follow its connection to the central nervous system and you can see all its ramification and connectivity within the central nervous system. So by labeling them in two different colors, we see where they touch, and so we have an idea where the synapses are. That's important for us in terms of the specificity and the connectivity. A special subject of research, the frog, and its metamorphosis from a tadpole to an adult animal. Schmucka's team investigates molecular and anatomical changes that drive a complete rewiring of the nervous system during this transition. The tadpole itself is fully functional. It can hunt, swim, and exist underwater. For the new task living as a frog, its neuronal networks have to be changed. Connections have to be broken and rewired to form new circuits. All this is done according to the instructions of its specific genome. Information is newly combined, signals are sent, and synapses are either shut down or activated. Schmucke and his team have developed methods and techniques that are supposed to help to understand the molecular mechanisms underlying the interconnection of the nervous system. So this group is actually the group who does the work. I owe all of these people a lot of credit. It's a, a great privilege actually to have uh, the ability to have such talented people working together as one group, as one lab, um, and actually with many different um, expertises and with a lot of um, ambition and drive. In his spare time, Schmucke loves salsa. Dancing, he relaxes and re-energizes. With the Humboldt Professorship, we have the new opportunity to expand our research uh, portfolio. We can include things that I was dreaming of for a while. And there's a real plan here in Bonn that I can see, and I'm, I'd be very happy to participate in that. Dietmar Schmucke's goal is to help establish a center for fundamental neuroscience in Bonn. Above all, however, the collaborations draw Schmucke to Bonn. The expertise of membrane biologist Thorsten Lang and the technology at the Limes Institute in Bonn enable Schmucke to explore molecular structures much deeper than before. The Leibniz Prize winner and neuroscientist Frank Bratke is an old friend and colleague of Schmucke's at the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases.
In Bonn, the future is undergoing construction, an outstanding location for neuroscientific research, and a voyage of discovery into unknown territory for Dietmar Schmucke. With this award, you have the ability to take your most favorite type of experiment, your most burning questions, and just get going and trying to answer it and to work on that right away.